Yo, what's up everyone? Tone from Tone's Custom Flies coming at you again. Just wanted to do a little demonstration on some of this brush based bait fish that I like to tie up. It's kind of the culmination of some of the other videos that we've done so far. Um, you know, we did the brush building one with the squimpish material and Icelandic sheep. Um, the other, talking about getting the proper top profile form in your peacock curl, which I think, you know, kind of helps it um, get its definitive shape a lot easier when you're using peacock in general. Not to mention the sweet translucency and the flash in there. You're always going to like it, but you can really see the hard line that's determined by this material when it's placed properly. So I've really, you know, come to appreciate it again. The other thing with the brush flies is achieving a 3D profile that I'm not sure if that's gonna fucking, that's gonna catch that on that camera, but we'll hope that it does. And if it does on this one, you know, nice bushy, consistent 3D profile, and that's exactly what we're looking for is consistency with these things. Very basic principles, very basic techniques. It's just a little bit of flash and touch to, uh, Put your style to it and that's just what i do so we'll get into the build <clears throat> i'll keep it nice and simple while getting a little uh, classy here but like i said it's all very simple the uh the design is simple the build is the elegant part when you spend a lot more time in the preparation of your building materials like customizing brushes um, it gives you the opportunity to cater the fly's dimensions and uh, density ratios, you know, to the level that you actually need them to perform as the fly you want to achieve. Uh, you want to be fishing at higher, lower, more push, less push, lower, um, shorter fibers, longer tails, more action, however. So here's just a couple of ideas to get into a platform that I think is going to be really helpful in your arsenal. A lot of the thing is preparation. So once you get your brush building techniques and densities down, it's all gonna go super, super easy. So first step, so we'll start tying in a little bit of a thread base just behind the hook point here. Not too far back, I would say, you know, between a 16th and an 18th of an inch. And we're gonna keep this design simple. Pull off a little chunk Squimpish hair in black. Cut that right at the base. And like I said, there's no secrets to what I do. So, I mean, I'm just hopefully teaching somebody some techniques and a newer way to look at a material or build to, you know, see if it caters well to your style. It's all, again, very simple. Just put an elegant little twist to it. So we'll take this top side, straight tire in, try and get a little bit of a taper to make it easier, or I'll just, you know, botch that and kind of just build over. So top side of the hook shank, nice and snug. Pull back, and I know about here is going to reach my six and a half inch mark. Get that hard length on there. Then the tail material. I'll just come in from about the two, two and a half inch mark, start tapering the material off a little harder. The material is generally tapered in here already, but I just like to give it, you know, a, a little bit finer touch when I'm going across it because really the, your, your taper is gonna be a big defining factor of how this fly is gonna look, which is also determined by how you build your brush. So now, oops, getting all. I have about a three, three and a quarter inch <clears throat> section of custom brushwork here. This is squimpish material and a little bit of Icelandic sheep. I know that this brush is thinner than I normally do, so it's gonna take a few more wraps. Um, it's it's a little bit more sparse it's going to take a little bit more material to be able to build up a denser profile which means a little bit more trimming of the taper on the back side of it but you can always afford as long as you know what you're building to be able to take on or put off pull off 
uh, material as you're trying to reach a desired profile. It's huh. always fun. So take the start of your brush. I'm gonna pull my thread wraps just forward from the back edge wrap there and stack directly on top. It's gonna to be a hard bump off the side, but we're okay with that because we're really gonna lock her down. Now this is the point when you're building a tail, you can get even fancier, throw some hackles, a little bit of flash. This one in particular, I just wanna keep nice and subtle. Uh, you know, a lot of demonstration purposes, but um, you know, practical use as well. So now that I've come up and locked that in place, I'm gonna open spiral wrap a little bit just to walk it over and really get some coverage. And I know that I'm really cinched in place there. So after knowing that you secure the brush down, let's jump down that. Ooh, pull her up to the eye. Just a quick hitch in there and really lock it towards the eye. Hang that up, we're ready to start catching this. And every few wraps, you're gonna to wanna to come in there and just make sure that everything is loosened up because you don't wanna catch anything under the wraps of your next subsequent turns of the brush. So just make sure everything is realigned every once in a while, print it all backwards, keep wrapping forward. Once you've made it to the edge, you want to give yourself a little bit of room. I like to say probably about an eighth of an inch will really give you enough space to be able to get some eyeballs and a little bit of peacock up there. So figure where we're at five or six turns behind that. Make sure your wire is nice and tight and I'll pull it straight back. Go right in front of it, five or six, seven turns. And now we'll start cleaning it up. Go through with your wire specific scissors, of course. It's all they do, it's all they need. Put that clean, preen that wire backwards because we're just gonna press it down and roll right over it. Take a handy little pliers. Get that nice and flattened down right where you're gonna make a smooth dome over it and then roll up to it. Again, about the eighth inch mark. So now is where the, now is where the taper comes in. Just gonna make sure all your material is freed. And to each side of the hook bend that it needs to be. I'm gonna pull this all back. And again, check your overall length. Then, we're just going to separate it top and bottom. Pull up straight so you can see the material as it's working itself backwards. So you can say, uh, determine how smooth that taper is actually going to be. So we'll start at about the two inch mark. And just start slowly tapering it back. Giving you that nice smooth transition on top. Do the same thing on the bottom side. Split that about in half. Take the thing, keep your fingers flat, and then run the material at about the two inch mark. With a nice smooth taper. You can always rework that after the fact as well. And chances are you're going to want to. So now we've achieved our general taper. I'm going to come through, put a few wraps in here, make sure that head is nice and cleaned off and snug. Ooh, got a couple of fibers, walk it up to the front, really lock that down. Come on back. And we're going to do our tab eyes. So 
So these, people like to put them in all kinds of different positions. Um, I like to have my eyeballs less than a quarter inch or so toward the eye of the hook itself, just because I, I like them riding a little bit more far forward. Um, and that one's gonna be actually set back just enough that I'm comfortable with. So we'll give it a nice little pinch wrap. Loosey goosey. You're gonna slip a little bit on this one. So we'll throw a few locket in there. Draw the tabs forward. Work the thread forward, bring it to the eye. Come back. We'll take the tabs off of those eyes. Sorry, the tag ends. <laughs> take the tag ends off the tab eyes. That's what I meant. Now, we'll come back and just lightly wrap, light pressure, clean up the head. Now that's compressed it a little bit. but it's still a beautiful 3D profile. So, again, like the previous demonstration that I do with the peacock hurl, they're unruly and all over the place, but they're all, um, they're all pre-bent over here. So all you gotta do, which can be a pain sometimes, is realign them so they're all rolled in the same direction Restack them to length. Oops, so you got, got one weirdo over there. Bring that back to length. I don't see that one. There we go. So this is almost going to be like a pinch. We're holding it with a significant enough amount of pressure that you know when you compressed the feathers, they're not going to move. And those are holding pretty dang solid right there. That's what we're looking for. Just clean up the head, make sure everything's locked in place. This is where she wants to go about six pieces of peacock curl is what I'll use generally for that kind of a head. Uh, if you wanna go a little bit wider head, bigger spine, longer spine, obviously you can do as much as you'd like within reason. So now at this point, we are ready to finish this off. And for this one, I'm just gonna finish it off walking forward a little bit and then right over the top. Damn, that was a little quick, but you know, if you need a whip finish tutorial, I haven't got one yet, so easy enough to find. Now we're in position. I'm just gonna take some resin. Woo. Make sure you get a nice even coat. Make sure it's nice and smooth. We've got all bumps and gaps filled and then I'll just keep it moving kind of level it out once I feel it's nice and leveled come back and cook that thing extra hard I feel like my resin's crispy so ooh, set that where she needs to go put this resin away real quick come back with my eyes and a little bit of glue Put this thing on its side, grab an eyeball, unplug the eyeball glue, you don't need too much, and then watch certain eyes that you'll have from time to time, and I just ruined that one, huh? uh, we'll have different adhesives on the back. Make sure that the type of glue you're using can accept the type of adhesive on there because I've had eyes in which I would have to remove the adhesive on the back side of the eye itself 
to be able to adhere onto something with the types of glue that I was using. So interesting little tidbit, check your stuff before you try it and then get disappointed if nothing's working. So in here, keep that thing from sliding and they usually set pretty quick. It set right on my finger pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna put another one on there. this thing instead of my finger. Beautiful. And there you have her. I'll take it for a wash, see what it looks like. Sometimes I like to come in and uh, check the belly taper a second time post tying. So we'll pull it out from the bottom side of the hook shank, right? You turn her upside down so the hook point is up. And then turn that to yourself. So all of your fibers are facing about, you know, a, a 40 degrees, 45 degrees, we'll say. And then you just lightly take your taper in, but you're basically shaving it all the way up to the entire length of the body material, starting at, you know, about the two inch mark. Ooh, get that thing stuck to you. Piece of cake. So that'll give it a little bit more scoop to the belly and less material to be able to foul on the hook bend while you've still got that 3D profile. And a nice suave look. So, if you enjoyed any of this, making 3D hollow brush flies, um, you know, give me a shout. Let me know what you think. Check out Squimpish Materials, Squimpish Flies. Check out my website at tonescustomflies.com or check any of my other pages for any details or info, photos, and eh, whatever. You know, just let me know. You got any questions? You got something you want to see? Holler at me. Let's make it happen. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll get some more fun stuff going soon. Peace.